to show that out there. Let me go ahead and pull up my screen here. All right. So thank you for joining. Today we are going to be talking about the Loud Institute um, and the project that we've been working with them on. Um, but before we get started, I do want to give a thank you to um, the Loud folks that are on the call today. Um, they'll be here. We'll have a dedicated uh, Q&A session at the very end in case you have any questions. Um, related to the platform or related to the Lound data um, specifically. So they'll be on the line. And then as well as our partners over at HCI who have been supportive um, in our initiative for better data. Um, so let me just go ahead and pull this up here. So just to give an, get an idea of the folks on the call here, uh, if you just Take a quick second to answer this poll. Let me know if you are familiar with Spotlight Analytics at all, um, if you've even heard of it or never heard of it, or maybe, possibly, but don't really remember. So nothing memorable. Um, just to get an idea of the folks that we have on the call. So that way I know exactly how much time or not to spend on Spotlight itself. So, okay. It looks like some of you are currently using it and some of you have heard it and quite a few of you have never heard of it until now. So that's quite all right. Well, thank you for that. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. So let's give you a quick overview of Spotlight. So what is Spotlight? Spotlight is, a, is our tool. It's our data analytics tool that we use. Um, it is data rich and it is all online based so you do not need to install any software um, it is a pretty low barrier to entry of use um, for everyone out there so it is comprised of hospital case mix data case mix being uh, historical data by nature so it is not live real time but historical um, and this includes many many almost too many bits of information and data fields but um, just to name a few that may be of importance that you're probably looking for are things like demographic, um, age, race, um, zip code, uh, that sort of thing, as well as admission discharge length of stay, um, encounter type, um, and then you can get down to the DR, specific DRGs or procedure codes or even payer codes, um, what have you. So really, it's a very rich, robust um, database. And our database is very secure. Um, it ingests the most current data. You know, we're always on the hunt for um, the most relevant and available data. As of right now, we have um, the latest data from Massachusetts, which is CHIA, as you probably well know. Um, so we have inpatient, emergency, and we're in the process of um, loading observation. And we also have the Boring State Rhode Island data for inpatient, which you may be familiar with. But this year, we're very excited to get outpatient data. Um, now, I won't say that I know exactly what's contained in, in this uh, data file because I myself do not know as this is the first year we're getting it. So we're happy that it's there. Um, you know, my guess is probably hospital outpatient data, but we shall see. So we can hope um, and see what this data um, is comprised of. And then also we have New Hampshire and Maine data in the works. So we're in the process of that. Um, still, some of it has been proving a, a little bit slower than we'd like, but thus we will keep uh, pushing forward and try to get that data uh, for the surrounding uh, hospitals, borderline, border state hospital. All right. Um, and then just to let you know that the Spotlight platform, it is very secure, it's very compliant. The users never actually access the, the raw data. Um, you essentially call up and, and view the data elements in the fields that get assembled using, we use Tableau and um, SQL Service. So they essentially get assembled depending on what you call upon. Um, and then any record that's less than 11 is suppressed. So those cells will be suppressed and it will tell you that it's being suppressed. So you know there's something there um, or if it's a blank or no zero. Um, 
and all, all the users sign an agreement of use, the uh, end user license agreement. So really, you know, this is basically to say that it is very secure. We, you don't have to worry so much about um, HIPAA and compliance or the legality of, of that, um, as long as you agree to the terms of use and the condition. Um, some of the advantages of going with us to Spotlight Series, and this may be the most salesy we'll get today, but some of the advantages you'll get is basically you don't have to take the time, cumbersome and time process, time consuming process of applying and getting approval for the data, um, whether that's through a state agency database or another avenue. Um, you don't have to worry about normalizing or cleaning up the data. We do all that for you, of course. Um, and then I'm sure the IT folks uh, here will, or at your you know, organization will appreciate this, but you won't have a need to stand up a whole environment for the data, which if you have ever tried, it is a very time uh, sensitive and, and cumbersome uh, task. So really all of this to say that by using Spotlight through us, you can get this data and it will save you a lot of time, a lot of complex uh, legalities and, and headaches. So those are just some of the advantages. And to continue on with that, um, you get immediate access. So upon signing the, the contract agreement mentioned, then use the license agreement. And once your account creation is set up, you can go ahead and access the data right, right then and there. It's as simple as that. So if you are um, in the need for the data for a report or your annual uh, yearly reporting, you can sign up with us right before that if you happen to come across uh, you know, during this time of the year, which I know many organizations were getting right into um, that particular time of the year. So it's a uh, perfect time to inquire about Spotlight. Um, the data itself is represented in what I like to call sort of the simplistic view or all the way ranging down to the uh, complex view. Um, they're essentially set in what we call presets or dashboard visualization or in the report form, uh, depending on which you prefer. And you can choose that from a drop down menu. But you would have essentially your, your general purpose views, um, or you can go into the custom report mode, which there you can drag and drop and click filters to narrow down to whatever your mind can come up with. If you want to look at a specific use case that's filtered on specific DRGs um, with a crosswalk of X, Y, Z variable, whatever that may be or for your needs, then that's what that custom report mode is, is designed for. It gives you an immense amount of flexibility. Uh, and then as a bonus, we make the routine work for you. It, it's set up easy. Um, as I mentioned before, those annual reports, if it's something that you know you're going to have to come back to time and time again, whether it's annually or, or a different frequency, you essentially can create your report template or we can help you with that even. Um, and that's where I mentioned the custom assistance uh, as needed. We can help you set up a particular report with your particular needs and you can come back to that as new data is ingested and made available, you can go ahead and run those reports um, as frequently as needed, uh, making your workflows essentially much easier. So, um, and another part of this is that once you do sign up, we will make sure to set up uh, the user's defined service areas, uh, primary and secondary, as well as their defined service lines. Um, any groupings, if, if you have any, uh, or if you'd like, I should say. Now, how is this data useful? Well, the data is the important part. I mean, you, we all know that we need useful data, valuable data um, for progress and improvement, whether this is gonna be for your financial or business use case or clinical, right, or both. Um, there's certain instances and in, in different uh, folks on the call that have um, different intents in mind and what this data would be used for or what's needed for. Um, and that's the beauty of it, that you, it's all right here. You can use it how you need to. And if that situation changes, you have everything still uh, right at your fingertips, essentially. Um, but 
this data gives you insight into market share, um, gain or loss, <laughs> depending. I mean, ideally gains, but um, but it will essentially tell you what are the variables, what um, are the variables that contribute to X, Y, and Z, um, what factors may be going into what's happening. Uh, it can help you with your patient uh, population uh, care, uh, as well as just any other variables that you might need to look into and see the nuances of why things are the way they are. For you know, this is perfect for um, strategic planning, um, statistical analysis. Uh, we've had users, uh, current customers that have used this that have helped define what the strategic decision they, they see in the future um, down the road on what type of facility and the resources that are allocated to it or, or vice versa. So it, it can be a useful tool. It's essentially how you use it or what you want to uh, use it for, but it has uh, great potential. Well, and then this also leads us to better data, having more useful data, which is why we have partnered with the Lau Institute. So we're proud to, you probably have seen us um, boast about it in some of our press, but we are proud to partnership, have a partnership with the Lau Institute. We've been working with them on this, uh, project to incorporate their data, um, and you'll hear why in just a minute, and then we'll actually dive right into the data itself so you can get a real idea of what is in the platform, the tool, what are some of the potential use cases, and, and what's, um, you know, what you can do with it. So what is the Lown Institute? Some of you may have heard of the Lown Institute, some of you have may, may have not. Um, I like to think of them as sort of a local hometown hero with the work that they've been doing. Um, they are a nonpartisan think tank um, that is advocating for a better healthcare system, a more accountable healthcare system. Um, currently, they are doing a project which is called the Hospital Index, and that is the data that we have. And I'll talk a little bit more in the next coming slides. Um, but if you think about it, and according to the words of the Lau Institute, that hospital and healthcare centers are the most important and crucial part, right? I mean, that obviously goes without saying. That's almost kind of too blunt, but it's the truth. So at the center of this, you know, you have to look at, especially with what's been going on in the past couple of years with um, a few of the different crises, as well as with COVID, there has been a lot of things that have, uh, shall we say, come to light um, with how healthcare systems are or what they are lacking. So all this to really say is that hospitals and healthcare systems are important and that their goal is to find what is best for the patient, not the corporation, not the organization, but how do we take care of the patient first, um, the patient at heart, the community. So, and before I go on uh, about the hospital index, let me just take a pause here and see if anyone has um, any questions or if um, anything specific to Lown or uh, Spotlight. Hey, Lynn, this is Dave. <laughs> hey, everybody, and thanks for joining. I just want to introduce v Dr. V. Cassini, who's joined us. He's on the call today, and he's the president and uh, CEO of the Loud Institute. So if anybody has specific questions for him, him or Carissa Fu, who's also on from the Loud Institute, you can certainly feel free to ask questions of them. And if Vikas or Carissa, if you guys have any comments about any of this as we go along through, just please feel free to chime right in. Mm -hmm. Indeed. All right. Well, uh, I will continue then. Uh, hopefully, we won't, um, you know, bore you with this. But I promise you, there's only another slide or two, and then we'll go right into the actual demo uh, portion of this. All right. So, as mentioned before, the hospital uh, index uh, round project is comprised of about um, 3,800 hospitals, and this may not be the most accurate figure, but uh, I believe it's roughly that. Um, it probably has grown a little bit since, but um, 
that should be more or less a very rough accurate number. Um, for now, Spotlight, what our data is focused on is going to be specifically Massachusetts right now. If there is any interest for um, outside of Massachusetts um, or even outside of the New England region for that matter, feel free to contact us. Um, the hospital index is a countrywide um, ranking metrics ranking system. So if you are interested in um, I would encourage you to, to reach out to the folks at uh, Lown as well um, to let them know of your interest. Um, but the Hospital Lown Index is, um, it's an index of about 38,000, uh, 3,800 hospitals, sorry. And it is a uh, metrics or a measure of accountability. Uh, we'll go through the different, different categories, but um, they essentially go over the equity, value, outcomes. Um, those are the three main pillars, but they go over those and rank them for every hospital that gets um, included uh, in this. And then for any specifics on the hospitals that are included or excluded for that matter, um, can be found on the Lown Institute website. But the uh, Lown Institute uses um, algorithms for predictive modeling that are regularly updated. Um, they have what's called a risk stratification index, uh, which has been tested and verified um, to make sure that the data that resides in there is accurate. Um, let's see. And then the sources, uh, the data sources are derived from government and commercial. Um, some of that being from CMS, Medicare, uh, IRS, HCIRS, um, and state databases, uh, et cetera. So as mentioned, the three main pillars, um, this is sort of to give you just a very high level overview of what the LAN data is, what uh, essentially includes, and what we'll be diving into in, in just a moment here. Um, so we, we break this down into, or they break this down into uh, a few different tiers, just sort of surface level, drilling all the way down to tier four. Now, a lot of this information you see here, um, so equity, inclusivity, uh, pay equity, community benefit, um, and then, you know, subgroup of that as you go down the tree would be uh, for each respectively, race, income, education, uh, compensation, the executive compensation versus worker compensation, and uh, for community benefit, you know, the, the charity spend, um, the community uh, benefit, the uh, community initiatives, uh, things like that. So those would be some, some of the top tiers, um, the higher level tiers. And then what we have that you're not able to necessarily get uh, on your own uh, is we have ones that go into tier three and into more specifically tier four. So it gets uh, very specific, as you'll see in a minute, um, the type of ranking information that you can get uh, access to. And we'll discuss in a little bit why this is important or what this information could be used for. Um, yeah. And I also want to just mention that- Lynn, the higher, yeah. Yeah, Lynn can I stop yeah. for a second? Yeah, uh, folks, folks that have questions, if you could please just use the raise hand feature and then we will unmute you as best we can. I'm uh, understanding folks cannot unmute themselves for questions. So we'll have to have folks raise hand and then unmute the folks as uh, they do that. So that would be the best way to ask questions. Yes, please do that. Feel free to raise your hand and we'll, uh, Dave, will you be able to monitor that? I will keep an eye on it then, yeah. Keep, awesome. keep going, keep on going. Um, and then there's also a Q&A as well, if anyone wants to go ahead and, and type that in there. Um, Correct. If you yep. want to plug in something like that in there, yep. Uh, yep. We'll Either also way. have a Q&A um, at the very end too. So we'll definitely make sure folks have an opportunity um, to get their questions in. So. Okay. Thanks, Dave. Um, I will say that some of the high level tiers, um, I'll encourage you, the, all the folks on the line here, to please go out and, and check out the Lown Institute's website where you can actually find um, a, a view of their uh, rankings. 
uh, right on their website. It's lowninstitute.org. And you can go ahead and, and get some of this information. The, the grade rankings, uh, not into the, not nearly into the specifics as we will go into or we have, but if those suit your needs, um, you know, I'm happy that that will be of some value and benefit to, to those that can use it. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and I will go ahead and jump right into the platform here. And while I do that, this may be a good time for folks to, uh, if any folks have questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand and we'll go ahead and unmute you. Also, let me know if I am uh, talking too fast here. So, all right. Now, can you see my screen here? Just uh, wanted to check. Yeah, yes. Perfect, good. All right, here. So let's go ahead into the live demo. So this is what, um, well, let me, let me back off before I say this is what you'll see. So as with everything and as what Lon is doing, there's always room for, for improvement. Um, they're constantly making their data better and so are we. Uh, so this is essentially what you will be seeing. Um, and we may be adding a few more features. We may be making um, a little enhancement. So it may vary slightly. So don't, um, you know, hold me to it that this is exactly what you'll see, but you will you get the idea and get the gist of the information that's here. Uh, it will only get better, not worse. <laughs> so let's start here with the over, overview high level summary. Um, so kind of as mentioned what the spotlight uh, model is, we have any, we have the views ranging from um, how I like to describe them as sort of simplistic or your general use views all the way down to your more complex and really whatever your mastermind can, can come up with. Um, as long as the data cells are in there, you know, the, the cells are the limit. That's, you can use whatever you want to to define your criteria of your analysis for your reporting. Um, and you can take this reporting and if you want to share this, you can download this. Um, plug it into a PowerPoint or spreadsheet and share it with uh, your board members, your chairs, uh, you know, who would have you, whatever your needs may be. Um, and just to reiterate, the, the users are not actually accessing the raw data itself, um, but essentially assembled view. So with that, let's, let me tell you a little bit about what we're seeing on the screen here. This is a very high level uh, summary of the ranking. Um, as you can see here, it has the hospital system, hospital name, the overall uh, composite grade, and then those um, those pillars, the main pillars here. Now you can obviously you can filter these if you'd like, uh, see you know who ranks higher, lower. Um, you can get into a few filters here, uh, a few main filters, you can narrow down and choose specific hospitals you'd like to compare yourself to. Um, so if you, you know, say maybe Cambridge Health Alliance, uh, Boston Medical, um, you know, you may want to compare yourself to a few others within probably your market share. Probably wouldn't want to take Berkshire just for the nature. Oh, but on the other hand, if you can come up with a use case that Maybe they're doing something that you're not in their ranking. Maybe you do. So that's the beauty of it. There's uh, some customization even on the very simplistic. Uh, and maybe simplistic might be, you know, under underestimating it. But the general use view, um, as we'll say. So here's the summary, the high level, and then you can go into each one just a little bit further here. Um, so let's go into equity. Now here you can start to see there's a lot more here than um, that, that simple um, diagram I had on the screen earlier. So some of these include what we have uh, tier four um, ranking and you can sort these, you can see you know, what uh, variables, uh, what nuances and compare what 
um, hospitals are doing well in some areas uh, versus others. You can see what your hospital or your organization, uh, where it ranks. And I'm sure a lot of the uh, executive team probably would care for this information, uh, I would bet. So there lies right then and there uh, some useful information, but it gets so much deeper than that. Uh, hey, Lynn, yeah. Yeah. could you hover over some of the top categories just so we can see the full yeah, name I, of some of those? Yeah, yeah of course, of course. So being that tableau, there's a lot of information here. It's, um, it, it can be visually appealing, but generally speaking, tableau, it, it is very, this is very data rich. Um, so I'm sorry if this is a bit of an eye test for some folks here uh, on the call. I know with Zoom, you're only seeing a portion of your screen as it is. And then when we're talking about data, it, it wouldn't be just unless uh, you were given an eye test, right? So, um, so here you have uh, CB, community benefits. Um, how has this organization ranked in terms of community investments, um, total expenses? Uh, so you can filter this and see the total ranking um, in comparison. And then you can also see the grades uh, it yields as well. And I don't want to focus on any hospital in particular. I don't want to call anyone out. Um, and if I do, you know, somehow shine a light negatively, um, that is not the intention here. It's merely just to show what the rankings are. The rankings are the rankings, um, plain and simple. So, uh, but I always think it's best to know how you rank, how you're doing, what areas are performing well, uh, as well as what areas you are not performing well to improve. So um, I don't think there's any organization out there that is not trying to improve. So, and if they aren't, then I don't think they'll be an organization much longer. So, um, but as you can see here, you have uh, community benefit, uh, Medicaid, uh, how much of the patient uh, revenue share is uh, for Medicaid patients. So that is a very interesting one here. So let's go ahead and just sort that in just a few. So as you can see here, this hospital uh, ranks number one in the Medicaid portion uh, of their share of patients here. Now, Tough Medical Center, Tough Medical Center is right in downtown, um, right between Chinatown, South Boston, uh, what have you. So it, it may make sense. For one reason or another, um, I'll I'll let you determine that. But and there's also a few other categories here uh, under equity. So we have um, executive compensation to worker wages. So you can filter this and see the ranking of how that fares out. And in contrast, what are the variables or, or uh, variances that in relationship to some of the other categories? Um, like inclusivity. So if we were to filter this, not from the worst, but to the best and say, well, what is the inclusivity here? So B, fairly good. Uh, pay equity, so that is rank number one. Now, albeit I'm not too familiar with Fairview Hospital other than its location, so I wouldn't be able to justify or not justify um, the ranking here and as to you know how exactly this makes sense. But I assure you, if you are interested in the methodology that the Lowndes Institute has, they have um, it listed for download for free. You, it's public access on their website if you would like to delve into that a little deeper. Um, hey, Lynn, mm -hmm. can you describe just the difference between a grade and a rank, just so folks understand the data? Sure. Yes, yes, yep. So good point. Um, thanks for that, Dave. So the rank right now, as mentioned before, we are solely focused right now in uh, Massachusetts specific. Um, now the Lawn Institute Hospital Index does rank the entire country, um, but for our purposes, um, we are looking essentially right in our own backyard in Massachusetts. So this list, the number, um, the rank number is from one to I believe 55 for the hospitals that are included, hospitals, care centers, acute care centers, um, that are listed for Massachusetts. Um, so right now we're focusing on Massachusetts only. If we do, if there is interest, explicit interest to, to go a little bit beyond that into the New England region, 
um, please do share that with us because that will help um, drive where you know we take this tool. Um, we are always open to our user feedback and, and our users are very involved in the creation and the embedment of Spotlight, really. Um, so we rely on our users to tell us what they want, what they want out of it, and how to best serve them. So essentially, at the end of the day, this is a tool for, for them, for you. Um, but the grade here is your central kind of school uh, letter grade, you know, A, B, C, D, uh, so E. Uh, and essentially, A is being the best um, at that particular category um, or, or section, segment. And then you may see some other ones, another type of ranking here called star rating. Uh, now, this is the CMS, uh, this is the star rating, and that is one through five, five being the best. So when you see that some of these are only in the low numbers, it's not because they're doing poorly. It's because it's out of five. Um, one is, uh, shall we say, the, the lowest is possibly poorly here, and two is a little better, and five being the best. So um, that's just an overview of the rankings here, just to kind of get our, our bearings here. Um, and please, Dave and anyone else, feel free to stop me uh, if I am going a little bit too fast. Um, so there's a lot of data, a lot to cover. Um, it's been very exciting stuff. It, it's been a long time coming that we've been working on this and want to finally bring it to the use, to the public, um, to our users. So we're, we're excited about that. So. so we've had a couple of comments. Mm -hmm. uh, just one is that we about zooming the, the views. It's harder for us to zoom these views because then we end up losing the controls on the side of the screen, that sort of thing. Yeah. But if there's some area if somebody's particularly interested in, we can try to zoom in on that for you a little bit. Right. Right. Um, and then, um, Lynn, if you could just make sure and speak clearly right into your microphone, just for sure. a yep. little bit of muffling. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yep. Okay. Yep. No worries. I'm using my uh, wired mic. My, my Bluetooth, of course, uh, failed on me uh, right before. <laughs> Of course, <laughs> so, of course. Uh, the days of Zoom, right? So, so yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and also, let me just go and say that for the purpose of, of this, we're not so much going to focus on the exact data numbers, uh, in this case, the rankings themselves, but more the functionality, the what I like to call the possibility of the data in here that, you know, you can use this data for whatever the possibility may be for your use case as mentioned whether it's business clinical outcomes uh, a mix of both whatever you can sort of come up or fabricate in your mind um, that is the system you know before you so we won't harp on the exact numbers on who's has the best or worst uh, inclusivity or, or worst pay equity um, i don't want to like i said i don't want to call any hospitals out um, if I accidentally do so, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, but this is merely to focus on the functionality of, of this tool, this platform, um, and to give, give folks on the call a sense of what uh, capable. And if anyone is interested and doesn't, um, maybe some of their questions don't get answered in this, uh, don't worry, please reach out to, to us. Um, I'll provide my contact, at the very, my contact at the very end of the slide, or the presentation rather. Um, and we'd be more than happy to, you know, do a one-on-one -on -one with you um, and give you a free quote if you're interested, or even just look at the, the platform a little bit more to see if it's a viable um, uh, tool for you. So you don't have to worry so much about trying to capture what is exactly in here. Uh, just, just get an idea and get a sense of the functionality and, and the potential here. Yep. Two uh, things quick, Lynn. Um, folk, Denny just reminded me that if folks are would like to try to zoom, if you click at the very top center of your screen, there's a little drop down that says view options. And then there's the um, zoom capabilities are there under zoom ratio. You can zoom in if you're interested there. That just gives folks control over what yep. they can see. We yeah. just don't want to zoom out of the window that we see because then we can't see the controls. <laughs> Maybe, <yeah. laughs> it may make uh, it hard for me to, to can't navigate, navigate. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, and then, and then, Lynn. Maybe the other thing to describe a little bit here is just that the ranks and the grades are all sort of 
you know, algorithmic calculations essentially of the various measures within that particular area. So like for community benefit, you'll see some of these columns that say CB colon charity care rank, for example, mm -hmm. CB stands for community benefit. And then mm -hmm. the, that's Correct. one, that charity care rank is one component of the overall uh, community benefit grade. So it all kind of gets summed together through the magic of the Lowne Institute and the calculations they do, they come up with the rankings right. and the, the grading. Right, it, exactly. So all this you see here, plus more actually. So, and this is um, a, a very kind of general view, but there are even more categories um, that go into the overall um, ranking here for um, the civic grade. Yeah. Yeah. So right, this is just one piece of the puzzle, so to speak. So there are many, many pieces, more than what's on here on this um, section spreadsheet here. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we go into this, the two other ones here, uh, we have value. Um, this is supposed to be, this is specifically um, kind of sort of targeted at uh, accountability, uh, mainly overuse, um, over usage, I should say. Um, and here you have the different, um, a ranking for the different categories. So I'll just, they're, they're very specific. Um, so I'll just kind of hover over a few of them to give you an idea, um, you know, what you would find here, right? Yeah, the idea being obviously that overuse and if, you know, Vikas or Carissa want to chime in, the idea is that overuse, you know, generally indicates that that particular clinical condition, in this case, carotid artery imaging for syncope mm -hmm. uh, measure is an indication that uh, of a particular test or procedure that may or may not necessarily be necessary for the particular condition being reviewed or being uh, performed. So it's a, it's a sense, of, it's a measure, and these are all, of course, through the Lown, you know, the Lown Hospital Index measures uh, defined there in terms of the ones that are identified by the LAM index and the LAM uh, procedures for, you know, those that, that are, you know, overused in the sense of ordered at times when they may not necessarily be indicated for other clinical reasons. So it's all clinically driven at this level. Is that right, Vikas? Do you have any other comments you want to make on that portion? Not really. It's claims based. <clears throat> and so there's always the argument about clinical nuance and not being able to capture the clinical nuance, um, you know, which is true. However, um, we've been very conservative in the services we've picked. Anybody who's done any health services research, looked at the literature, or maybe worked for an insurance company will know that. There's probably a lot more areas that could be included, but we've been conservative based on you know what's in the literature and where the strong consensus is. And then the algorithms we use uh, with claims data are designed to be you know as specific as possible. So we try not to be overly sensitive. We try not to uh, you know make a type error in which we're labeling something as overuse that isn't, we're more likely to not label something overuse that is uh, in our effort to be specific. Having said all right. that, you know, it's claims based and, you know, you know, you couldn't take, you know, the count and then say each and every one of those is absolutely overuse. You need clinical assessment, but we see it as a way of guiding efforts, focusing resources, uh, for people who are interested or, you know, who are taking risk contracts or whatever. Yeah, that makes good sense. Thanks for that clarification. Back to you, Lynn. Yep. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, but like, like Vikas was saying that this is an indicator, um, if, you know, not for nothing, it's an indicator to start to identify maybe some sources or, or areas of variation in, in why. Um, maybe you won't be able to answer necessarily why, but you'll be able to start um, using this as a guide towards um, finding uh, out why. So let me just kind of quickly go 
into this as well, just to show you. And then I'm going to switch over into a few different other views um, as we're starting to um, wind down on time here. I want to make sure to get those in uh, and then save some room for questions. Uh, so this is the outcomes, the clinical outcomes. Um, same thing, same type of view as the previous three pages. Um, some of these are tier four, and this is a, a um, few collection of some of the, I say few, but uh, a few collection of some of the different ranking categories here. Now, I'm not going to delve into uh, these too much, but let me switch over into um, the next couple of views ending with the custom report one where you can take some of those measures that you did see um, and you can ultimately add and drop um, and configure those into a report that's usable for um, you know, whatever your use case is. So here is the um, HRR or hospital referral region map. Um, so here is an interesting view where you can break things down into a little bit of geographic uh, region um, to focus on. So there are, obviously you can see here, very popular, being Boston at the center here. So that goes without saying. And you can filter um, these down as well. If you want to filter specifically in just this region um, with maybe X, Y, and Z variable, which I'll show you, we can do that in the custom dashboard. Um, but for now, right here is a more general view with the um, HRR region in mind, uh, breaking down these, and you can filter um, by your hospital or hospital system. And you can also filter by um, the different uh, grades, the different rankings here to see which ones for X, Y, and Z come up as the highest, lowest, or see in your area what they are, how they rank for, um, for these in comparison to your, to your hospital or organization. And then we also have kind of on a similar note, but slightly different um, information here uh, is the heat map. This is a composite rank, or you can change it to see equ uh, equity, um, value or outcome. Since equity is, is such a, um, you know, growing and, and hot topic, uh, you know, top topic, not the way phrasing of it, but a very important um, topic in the healthcare um, industry right now. So here you have Boston Medical Center ranking uh, first and well, yeah, so top rank and then the um, lowest rank or overall composite rank. And you can, you know, uh, if you want to narrow this down into say just maybe the, the Boston region or uh, say maybe the, the Worcester, you know, area out there for the Berkshire, you can do that as well. Uh, as you can see, not a whole, you know, you have a specific set to choose from. But for this case, I'll just highlight Boston hospitals, Boston area hospitals that are in the uh, HRR. Um, and we'll say, let's, let's look at equity, uh, for example, here. Let's go take a look at equity. So in this scenario, we have Nantucket College Hospital, maybe that's a unique one, but um, it is ranking the highest for this criteria. Um, you can hover over the hospitals and you can see, or the squares rather, and you can see the hospital, the hospital systems it is associated to, um, where it's located, and as well as its rank uh, number. And just to keep in mind, this rank number is for within Massachusetts um, ranking. The system that the platform here does the ranking for Massachusetts. Um, it calculates the values uh, for that. And then just uh, maybe another one, we'll just take a look at value. Um, the, so, that's value here, and uh, maybe not so good value here, from best to worst, and then everything in between. Uh, any questions so far? This isn't anything necessarily uh, earth shattering, but just wanted to point out some of 
um, the, the functionality here. And really this is, what I've shown you is essentially just the tip of the iceberg. Um, yeah, if folks could enter any questions through the Q&A, the chat is fine as well, or raise your hand if you have any questions and we'll respond to you that way. Okay. Um, I know we're starting to run low on time. I do want to make sure to show you this in, in some possible, um, the functionality of it, um, even if it's just a few simple scenarios, as well as leave some time for Q&A. So here we have the custom reporting modes where you can dive into any of the specific categories or measures um, that you can possibly think of. So uh, here you have your, if you're familiar with Tableau, this is essentially the, the you know, your, your standard layout. Um, you can change this to fit your needs. You can take these, drop these, add more to them, um, what have you, to make the report and to uh, export it to your liking. Um, but for this purposes, this is how we have it stand up as your standard um, start off the bad template here. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at some of the different measures. So here we can see the overall composite grade. Uh, we can see the overall composite rank. So let's, let's maybe uh, filter this. Um, oh, let me remove this here. And just to clean things up so you can see a little bit better. Um, but here you have the ranking here. So one all the way down to, I believe, 55. So now let's set this up so we have our overall uh, best ranking overall, shall we say. Let's see um, how they do in, in terms of uh, pay equity rank. Um, and I don't mean necessarily they, Boston Medical. I don't necessarily am wanting to point that out, but just to see how some of them do here. Um, so this is still ranking. Um, it's just that this has some decimal form here, which um, in the final product, you know, it'll get cleaned up here. But you can see the different rankings here in correlation. So this may be overall rank one, but it ranks for the, uh, first in the pay equity. Uh, and then even to go a step further, let's see what about executive work compensation to uh, workers. So still right about there, which would make sense. Um, and then what about, let's see, inclusivity. So how does the inclusivity of their uh, patients uh, ranking? Um, let's see, let's just drop this in here. We'll take a look at education and they are ranking number one. So this, what this um, category is representative of is the patient um, that they're seeing and their education, um, the extent of their education for, for lack of better word. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, because but, uh, the Carissa, but um, the, that is what that is um, saying here. Um, as well as what about inclusivity when it comes to race? You know, how do they say, there seems like they are very inclusive when it comes to different races. It seems like they are very diverse um, in their patient pool or their patients. Um, demographics here. And that's, I guess that really doesn't sort of, you know, surprise being that it's centrally located right downtown. Um, but you can use this as a tool, as sort of a guide to see some of the other hospitals, maybe ones in your surrounding area um, compare to yourself. So if you want to go ahead and maybe filter um, some specific hospitals, you can, you know, uncheck all these and look at very specific ones. So maybe Cambridge Health Alliance and Boston Medical Center with Tufts, et cetera. Um, unless you're looking at maybe Lowell General, then maybe you may want to look at uh, a, a different criteria set. But this gives you the flexibility of narrowing your search um, into finding out what are the potential variances and why in, in you know, seeing what could be done about them. And, um, using that as a guide tool. 
So let's see. Hey, hey Lynn, we had a question. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the, so HRR is HRR versus the CBSA and HRR I know is the hospital referral um, region, yeah. CBSA is what? That is, um, that is the, the size, uh, I forget the exact uh, acronym stands for, but it's essentially the classification of the size of the hospital. So let me pull up, uh, mm -hmm. it essentially will okay. determine if it's a um, rural, uh, urban or, right, the metro, sorry, metro, not urban, but um, mm -hmm. I think essentially most of almost all but maybe one or two of the hospitals um, in Massachusetts classify as the metro hospital and I believe this is uh, due to the criteria of bed sizes uh, or bed counts um, etc. Gotcha. Um, okay. I, I say exception of two but it, it may be two or three give or take but something to that uh, effect. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot, and, and to your point, Dave, there's a lot of um, definitions that you may not know right off the bat, uh, especially if you're working with more sort of the clinical DRG or, or the uh, procedure code. This is maybe a whole different realm. Um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, nestle a, a tab, a drop down here that has the data definitions um, that will spell out what it is. Um, as well as what that element, data element, is, is comprised of. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we okay. won't necessarily go into exactly how it's calculated because that's, you know, lounge specialty, but we will tell folks on what it is, essentially how they can use it. Um, so that's to come um, when this gets released uh, to the user. And actually, should we see if there's any questions now? There's five minutes left. Um, we may end up doing a part two, or if anyone is very interested, we would be happy to um, do individual walkthroughs um, to kind of meet one-on-one -on -one for anyone that is interested in this or Spotlight in general, or both. Um, we do said this is a good time to transition to Q&A then since we only have uh, five, four minutes left. Right, I'm wondering if we can unmute folks. I, I don't have the power to unmute Let me, um, Yeah, that would be helpful if we can do that. <clears throat> so we have our, our classic uh, webinar functionality here. So let me, I don't think there's a way other than going one by one. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants to um, say anything, please just raise hands here and uh, I'll try to go ahead and unmute you. You know, or continue to type questions also in the question box and we can answer them that way too. Yeah, that, that may work as well. I'll raise um, your hand either way. Yeah. So let me go ahead and put, um, you see the screen here? Yep, we're good. Perfect, let me go ahead and uh, just put this on here. Uh, some of you may be wondering, well, what's the cost, right? There is a cost involved. Um, we do a sliding scale to be fair, um, to level the playing field, so to speak, um, and it's based on the hospital's net revenue. So, you know, feel free to contact us for quotes, um, or even if you're just intrigued about this, just please reach out to us. My contact information is there. Um, we'll connect you with the team. Uh, my email is lin at mahealthdata.org, that's MA for Massachusetts, healthdata.org, pretty easy to remember. Um, and if you don't, that's okay, you can just uh, Google search for us online or go to the Lyme Institute um, website as well. But uh, are there any questions? I don't, see any, in the ch I don't see any in the chat window right now, uh, Lynn, okay. but, uh, or raise hands, I don't see any questions out there. But uh, as Lynn said, if anybody has further questions or would like to dive deeper into the data. Obviously, we just touched the surface of what's available here. And you know, with all the focus and emphasis coming at us around health equity and quality and value, as well as, as Lynn mentioned earlier, our case mix data, which has really more to do with volume, uh, we feel like we're touching on a lot of the key strategic and planning needs of our member organizations and we would give preferential we do give preferential membership um, pricing to uh, existing mhdc members as well 
for access to the loud data as well as the spotlight data. So feel free to reach out to us at this email or any one of us here at uh, Mass Health Data Consortium. Any other questions, comments, chats? All righty. Well, Lynn, we should thank right. the folks yeah. at the Lown Institute probably one more time. Yes. Um, well, there's thank you. Dr. Sani is on. Carissa, I don't know. Chris is on as well. Yeah. Uh, we just want to thank you guys uh, again publicly here and, and hope that it was of value to folks and that we uh, are beginning to start to figure out how to address some of these strategic and planning needs for our organizations. So, thank you. Thanks, Vikas. Thanks.